Hello guys, welcome back to another Car Expos video. Today we are working on my own car. It's a Mini Cooper SR53 2002. And this weekend, oh, this week, I'm going to Auto Mechanica. And I decided to do a few jobs on it. It's very much needed. And let's get to the problem. So, this is, it's a, I got this car probably about two years ago. And the radiator was leaking a little bit, so I replaced the radiator and I very strongly believe they put some rad welds in the cooling system. My heater matrix is a little bit plugged and I want to replace that in the future as well. But the car doesn't overheat when you're driving, you know, on a motorway. If you just keep driving, it just keeps on a 90 that no problem. The problem is when I stop in traffic, it overheats really quick. So I'm gonna scan the car for any codes, try to activate the fan because that's the only thing that could be wrong really. The fan not coming on when I'm in slow traffic and obviously the car overheats. Right, so I've got the ignition on. Mini Cooper SR53 2002. Let's scan the car. Let's see if we can get any codes. All right, so electric fan, relay one, it puts low, signal not available, this permanent. It's the same thing with relay number two, there's a permanent as well, so there's no signal. Going to the relay, okay. All right, let's try, so they are both permanents. Let's try to activate this fan. All right, so stage one. Nothing. I can't hear anything. I can't even hear any relay clicking or anything. Same thing with stage two. Uh, right, okay. Right, so my next step is going to be check the fuses obviously it's a long input probably I haven't got any power going to, to the relays that's why I've got that cold so yeah let's check fuses and relays first you know start with the basics all right so we've got the relay box here and very handy you go with the the layout for the relay so to have a relay R3 for the cooling system and then we have, we should have some, uh, there we go, 50 amp fuse there. And that seems, that seems it really. Oh no, there's a F8, another fuse there, 30 amp. So that's the three fuses that we have to have a look at that relay to. So let's go ahead and remove them. Right, let's. Let's start with the 30 amp fuse, so it's F8, which is this one. And it seems to be, seems to be fine. Just gonna visually inspect first. I can, I can obviously test them afterwards, but I'm not worried about that now. So I've got 50 amp now, which is this guy. Am I gonna be able to remove that? Oh yes. Again, I'm looking at the fuse and it seems to be absolutely fine, no problem. Obviously I should I should test them with a multimeter but I'm not going to do that now, so right the relay Again, any greenies? It doesn't seem to have any anything in there. All right, okay. All right, so it seems to be all normal here at the moment. Let me get my uh, test light and then I'm gonna go through everything now. All right, so I've got my test lights here. I'm just gonna go through those fuses. I hope you guys can see it there. That's a good shot. I normally go through all the fuses. That's good, good. So 
Mazda is a 30 amp that we just visually inspect, so it is good. You can confirm that. You guys can see the light, can you? So that is a 30 amp fuse there. Just gonna go through this. It's, it's kind of a good uh, practice to, to ooh, good practice to check them. All right, so there's one here. This doesn't seem to, to have power. All the other ones are good. So this one, if you can notice it, is actually a little bit different to the other ones. 10 amp fuse, you've got power on one side, nothing the other side, so we definitely got an issue here. So I'm gonna remove this one. Let's have a look. It might not be anything to do with this system, but there we go. And yeah, there you go. As you can see there, hope you can see it. It's, it's definitely burnt or blown. So let's have a look at what fuse that corresponds to what, what circuit. So that was a 10 amp fuse. One, two, three, four, five. So that's the fifth one. So one, two. And it's this F5 right here, and it's a five amp. So this fuse has been replaced for an overrated one. And that is one of the, one of the big mistakes that people do. They uh, they have a problem with the circuit. They think that the problem is with the with the fuse. They put like an overrated fuse in there, and they uh, and they actually do more damage than good. You know, so let me go grab a, a five amp fuse, and at the moment you can only see like an engine a sign there. So I don't know what that relates to engine management. But let's change that fuse. I'm probably gonna get some diagrams and and some information as well to carry on with the, the diagnostic. All right, so correct fuse this time. We've got a five amp fuse. It's good, so put it in. Hope it doesn't burn straight away. So there you are. Do we have power now? Yeah, we do. Okay. I still need to check what this fuse actually, what circuit is protecting, but I've got an engine management and like that. I'm gonna get my scanner and try to operate the fan again. All right, guys, so you got the five amp fuse there, the orange one, and I'm going to activate the fan again. And it, it, the f I already done that, the, the fuse is blowing. We're gonna operate it now. I hope you could see that. The fan started to go, started to, to turn, and then the fuse blown. So def definitely gonna, get, uh, gonna have to have some diagrams with this circuit here to see what's going on. We have a short somewhere or, or, or something's not quite right. So let me remove the I hope you could see that. That was quite a big, there we go. Let's put my hand behind it. You can see there. So that's blown. Right, so we're on the right track. Let's get diagram and check for that circuit now. All right, so I have some diagrams here. There's a mixed match of diagrams where I think it can get us uh, somewhere. It's very difficult to get some this sort of information here in UK, even paying for a very expensive subscription, very limited amount of information, but I think it's gonna help us anyway. So, this is the fuse box here. This is the fuse F5, which says it here F47, and it had like an engine management uh, sign, which didn't really explain what it was for. So that's that, and then F47, 5 amp fuse, which does correspond to what we had. Engine coolant blower motor relay. So that's controlling that. And then we come to the first diagram. Right, so we have our fuse here. The 50 amp fuse, the 30 amp fuse, and the five. So this one is the one that is blowing. So F, um, 50 amp fuse, F58 is battery powered all the time. Okay, straight to our coolant firm module. And I believe that's gonna be our speed two. Then you have our 30 amp fuse. 
uh, battery powered again to our coolant fan relay and I believe that's going to be our speed one straight to the module there and then we have our 5 amp fuse sorry our 5 amp fuse there which is going to allow that relay and the coolant fan module to switch which is controlled by our ECU so the ECU will be grounding our coolant fan relay and then our coolant fan module so it's controlled by ground by the ECU and without that fuse there the 5 amp fuse nothing gets switched so it does need that fuse and going back here this K46 K76 which doesn't say what it is um, I couldn't really find the, the diagram for what's behind here what I could find is the one for a diesel and I believe it was like a year 2003 or something diesel it's probably a bit older than that to be honest I can't, can't I don't think there's any diesel in 2003 but it says diesel there as you can see K46 K76 ECU relay so it doesn't correspond to my other diagrams and I couldn't get anything but my what I'm thinking here now, right, this is our a 5 amp fuse, which is, is ignition, which is powering uh, the motor. So if you can see this relay here, if you see the, the load side, it's direct powering the, the power steering pump fan. Okay, so that's the power steering pump relay, power steering pump fan. And... Um, this 5 amp fuse, I believe, is also uh, the ignition for our fuse F47. That's what I'm thinking at the minute. So when you have ignition, you're always going to have power there. And what I'm thinking now, right, is if that power steering pump fan is seized, which if you are familiar with Mini Coopers, this fan here is a massive problem because it's right underneath the engine. The engine, it, it gets wet, salt, grit, everything. So it gets seized up. is a, is a big problem. This fan, and what I'm thinking now, this fan here is probably seized and drawing too much current and blowing that fuse. And when it blows that fuse, it brings the whole coolant um, engine coolant system down. So that's what I'm thinking at the, at the moment. So that's all I have. So what I'm going to do now, I'm gonna go and remove this power steering pump fan and see if it sees. Uh, perhaps disconnect it, see if it stops the, the fan blowing and then it get confirmation. Right, so here it is the past turn cooling fan and if you go on the right track look at that it's broken Let's see if we can manage to to unseize it yeah it is knackered it is totally knackered so that was our problem for sure so that's why the five five amp fuse was blowing so I'm gonna leave this connected now I'm gonna put another five amp fuse down see if we can get this cooling fan working now and I need to get obviously another another power steering fan all right so another five amp fuse going in let's get this kind of now and operate the fan oh, I didn't have the ignition on let's start again There we go. I can hear it. Now it's going. Let me operate it again. Yeah, 
there you go. It's not running for very long and it doesn't it doesn't seem that healthy either. And the fuse is not blowing anymore. So it's all good. Let me do it again. That's basically what I'm doing here guys. Stage one, let me try stage two now. There you go. Alright, so that was our problem. We need to get on one another fan and the problem should be fixed. But it should be alright for, for now. Just to get to uh to Auto Mechanica and uh, my power steering pump is not that brilliant, it's very noisy anyway. That's probably one of the reasons why, because that fun. Wow, a power steering pump fan bringing down the whole cooling system down and causing an overheat. I'm absolutely gobsmacked. But we did get there in the end with the help of diagram and I don't think I would be able to find it without it, although it's not perfect, but we got there in the end. Another thing that I, was, I would like to mention, my coolant fan, um, the reason why I didn't go for that, and I, I, I didn't test it, because it was because about a year and a half ago when I changed the, the radiator, I did test it with a power probe and it was working, and I, I was overheating then, that's one of the reasons why I changed the radiator, because it had a hole in it, a uh, small, it was small leak in it, so I changed it, so I knew that was fine, although, it doesn't sound very healthy and I, I think some segments on that motor is gone as well because if you look back on the clip where I was activating or doing that I was doing the active test I had to move the fan with my hand once or twice so that's probably probably needs to be done sooner or later but it should be good for me to go to Auto Mechanica which was the, the whole purpose of this repair and that's it for today I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope the video helps if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any comments, just leave it below. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers.